Hey, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. This is probably going to be a very weird video because I've never made something like this. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's a very short video as well. But I wanted to come up here and just say that I was wrong, very wrong about something. And um, I know most people probably don't care <laughs> about my opinions or like the integrity of my channel. And I'm acting very dramatic about this. But I just wanted to say that a couple months ago, I made a video about an album that came out, which was Guts by Olivia Rodrigo. And I'd like to think that almost every one of my videos on my entire channel is never bashing any music because I genuinely like most music. If I'm going to say something bad, it's usually me saying like, it's not for me. And I believe that like not every song is going to be something that I genuinely enjoy. Um, which is also why sometimes I only listen to things that I think I will like. Like if you've noticed on this channel, I don't just diversify all too much with the videos that I make just because I know that there's a good chance that I'm gonna like certain songs from these certain artists. Um, all of that being said, I genuinely like almost all of Olivia Rodrigo's music. I've listened to like almost all of Sour, which I never finished. I don't even know what happened to that. Um, and then I did a whole video on Guts. And then I, most recently I actually listened to her Hunger Games track, which was great. I think that's one of the best songs from her, by the way. But I was thinking back about the things that came out this year because I'm closing out this year and I've officially been on YouTube for one year, which is kind of crazy, but I was just hopelessly so wrong about Guts. I, I enjoyed a good amount of the songs. I did, but a lot of the times I found myself saying that this isn't for me and boy was I wrong. <laughs> this has been an album that I have been playing. I don't want to say nonstop because that's not true, but very often and much more than I ever anticipated it being. Um, so I just want to go back and kind of just very quickly mention the things that I were, was wrong about with this album. First of all, All American Bitch. I don't, I didn't even watch my own 46 minute video to even remember exactly what I said. So if you know the video well, which I doubt you do, I might even be wrong about some of the details I'm about to say. <laughs> but um, All American Bitch, I just know that I described it some way in a shape or form with Brutal. And while I understand my own comparison to that, considering it's very angsty and very teen-like, I would also like to say that Brutal is a great song. I do like Brutal. But All American Bitch really takes it a step farther and I see so much more now in hindsight how much growth this album has had because while there are songs like Brutal and All American Bitch that sound similar, but they're so very different. And I can see it now considering like Brutal was very much a teenager song to me. While this song is, it's taking a more grown up approach of still saying that, you know, there are things in life that people are going to scrutinize, even as an adult, that doesn't change throughout your life. You're going to have new things or new standards to try to uphold, which are kind of put onto you by society. And I feel like this was such an, a cool way of like showing the progression of as she's learning to become adult, she's learning the adult problems that now she's facing and she's still saying that she's kind of rejecting that status quo in a way. Um, on top of all that, it's just a really fun song. Do I fully love the scream at the end? No, but <laughs> it is a song that again, I play often if I'm listening to Guts. I don't always listen to it all the way through, but there that was definitely a highlight on the album to me. Um, bad idea, right? That's gonna be one that hasn't changed all that much for me. Um, that was probably one that I definitely described as not for me. And I, I still kind of believe that, but it's not in the sense of like, I'm too grown to listen to this music, which is kind of the approach maybe I had before. It's not that, it's just like not, uh, a vibe that I like, to be honest. Like, if I'm gonna be honest, it's just too, it's too casual for me to like, so it's not my favorite. But it has also grown on to me to this point where like, I would sing along to it. Um, Vampire, I feel like I said this, so my feelings haven't changed much for it. Amazing song. Like, it came, that was the first song, that was the first experience with the album. And I was pretty skeptical about a song titled Vampire. And I was thinking like, how can this be a meaningful song when it seems like a very weird way, a weird song. It was gonna be a weird song, like, let's be real. Such a good song. That bridge is literally incredible. I, I love that song. Like I, it's the one that's been out the longest and probably the one I've heard the most, but it, every time I listen to it, it legitimately feels like 
a brand new song or something that I'm just like, this is gonna be like timeless to me in some sort of way. Maybe that's being dramatic. Maybe I'll change my feelings in two weeks, <laughs> like I did with this whole out, this whole video. But definitely a song that I think is very well written, super well written. Lacey, see that song wasn't ever my favorite just because it was very slow. Um, there were some lyrics that I do like about it, uh, like um, like aren't you the sweetest thing on the side of hell or something. So there are things that I like about that song, but I would say that one, my feelings haven't super changed about them. Um, but the next literal like five or six songs have completely changed for me. So this is where we kind of like, this is what made me decide to want to make this video because I could start with Ballad of a Homeschool Girl and listen to the rest of the album happily, <laughs> like very happily listen to it. Um, Ballad of a Homeschool Girl, I feel like that was a song that I liked from the beginning. I don't think I have really any ill intent from that song in the original video, but I feel like it's a it's a cool song that it's so specific to her, but it becomes so relatable in a sense because clearly I've never had the experience of being a homeschool girl or writing a ballad, but yet it had just things that like, what you deal with of being like anxiety ridden of the things that you don't know social cues. It, I don't like always bringing up Taylor Swift when I talk about Olivia Rodrigo because I'm not saying that in any sense of like a copying thing, but it reminds me a little bit of something like Antihero. Do not sound the same, not trying to say that at all, but it reminds me of like the writing of something that can be so specific to that one person, like Taylor Swift's song Antihero. She's talking about her depression and like all of the things that she does by putting it in a pretty fun pop song, but making it so relatable in that chorus where it's like, it's me, hi, I'm the problem, you know? Things that like everyone would say, yeah, I'm the problem too. Like, you know, it's relatable, but it also has very specific relatability to the writer. And that's what I feel like Ballad of a Homeschool Girl does as well. And it does it really well where she describes her experiences, where every guy she likes is gay. All the things that she doesn't know as a product of being a homeschool girl. But at the same time, even if that wasn't your experience, you could still relate to that in the sense of like, I've made crippling mistakes. I've made things, I've made things weird. I've made them worse each time that I'm alive. Everyone, if you've gone to middle school, has felt like you have gone through social suicide. So it's definitely a song that I appreciate more than what I did before. Um, Making the Bed, that is another great song. I feel like I did like that one um, a fair amount when I listened to the album the first time. I wouldn't say my feelings super changed on this one as much, but it has always been a pretty consistent song. I've always liked the aspect of the song where it's like, you notice that you want your life to change, but you're not making the action to do it. And it's like, you're at the end of the day, you have to be okay with it because you're the one that's making the bed. You're the ones that's putting yourself in these situations and these are the consequences of those actions, which still, I don't know if it, like I said, if it changed for me, but it's really tying me together with the theme that I kind of missed with the album of being an adolescent and I, I do feel like Sour was a teenage record and this feels like her moving into her adolescence where, again, I've said it before, but like things like All American Bitch and then making the bed, it's like she can see herself growing in these situations and she can see that she needs to make a change. Maybe she needs to grow up a little bit. Maybe these are things that she needs to do, but she's also at the point in her youth where it's like, I don't have to make these changes tomorrow. I'm 20 years old or however old she is, you know, no one expects you to become an adult overnight. And I feel like that is partly what I expected and shouldn't have expected. Like, why why is anyone in, the, in a rush to grow up? Like, you know, coming off of Sour, you think that, you know, that was a teenager record. Like, you're going to have to make something so completely different. And she really didn't. She made something different, but kept it close enough to where you can still be interested in it and seeing how much she's grown. And I feel like that really ties into the last song, which I'll get to in a second as well. Um, Logical, this song has completely changed for me. I I don't remember exactly what I said in the video about Logical, to be honest, but I know it wasn't my favorite thinking like two plus two equals five. And I'm not gonna sit here five minutes and try to explain to you that you know that that's clearly not serious and it's not that, not that deep, it's not, but I just didn't see how, like, I, I noticed some of it in the moment, but like stuff with like the bridge where it was like, you could tell that this person was older and taking advantage of her and like how, you know, everything in her mindset has changed. And it, 
And I would like to tie it back into the theme of the album to me at least where, you know, you are going through these changes and things like American Bitch and stuff like that where society is putting things on you. So maybe you do look to those adult figures in your life um, and, and trust them. And I feel like that is something that happened to where she had to learn a very hard lesson. But feeling like you could see the manipulation that she was manipulated in that situation and it kind of just circles back to the point of like, you're not expected to grow up overnight and the people that you surround yourself with are very important because even if they're adults, doesn't necessarily need, mean that they always know better. Um, so I, I really like that that message of that song. Get Him Back, that was probably a song that I did say was like not meant for me. Still would argue the same thing. It's not a song that I'm like, yeah, this is an experience that I've had. But it is a really fun song. Like it's played, I think this is what has been serviced as like the, the hit of the album outside of Vampire because I've seen it a lot of places and heard it. And I sing it, like, I, I enjoy it, but I would still say that, that song just kind of carries its way through the album for me. Um, Love's Embarrassing, I think I like that one if I remember right from the entire time with the album, but it has grown on me a lot more just because I just think it's a fun song. Like it doesn't have any super deep meaning to me. Um, just a really good song and it's just very, again, going back to those feelings of always feeling like you're the awkward one, you're the one that doesn't belong. Um, so nothing really more to say with that one, but The Grudge, which was a song that I very much liked from the album, looking at it now in hindsight, I do see more of that thematic part of it with like what I was saying about Logical and how you can see that people beyond her age are, you know, taking advantage of her and they are not the people that you should always be trusting. And I feel like, again, that goes back to the lesson that she learned is like, she's not in a rush to grow up because she's also seeing the people around her that are grown up and like how she somewhat makes better decisions than those people because those people are trying to manipulate i don't she's not a child but you know taking advantage of people that you know you have no business really doing that with um but i do think the grudge has like a twinkle of forgiveness which i think is also um, going back to the adult theme is like you know, you are taking the higher road in some sense, because if you think of, if you listen to the bridge of The Grudge, you would say like, how would you have forgiveness if this person genuinely has everything and they're only, the only thing that makes them happy is seeing you fail. That is not a person that you, I don't think I could find forgiveness for. And she even kind of says that she hasn't gotten to that point, but she's open to that one day. And I would say like, it takes a bigger person to do that. So I see that within, you know, the constraints of the theme as well. Um, Pretty Isn't Pretty was a song that I wasn't super interested in. Um, I don't, I probably said that this one wasn't meant for me. And I think that it brings up very valid concerns, especially for women, um, just in any type of spotlight, not even the spotlight, you could just be an average woman and or person really, and go through these things of feeling like you're never enough. Um, I do feel like though there are songs that maybe portray this a little bit be better. Um, one from Sour that comes off better to me, to be honest, is um, like Jealousy Jealousy. But teach its own. I, I don't have the distaste for this song. It's just one that's kind of in the middle of the road for me, to be honest. But the last one is Teenage Dream. And that's where I really don't think I noticed how cohesive this album really was because this song is all about her saying goodbye to that era of her life and realizing that she's no longer a teenager and she's no longer going to get away with certain things that she feels like she probably gotten away with by being a child but then she's also so far into that where it's almost been instilled to her again that she has to grow up so she's kind of like hurt by the feelings that she feels like that she's losing this teenage aspect of herself because that was a big part of her identity but now someone wants her to be 30 years old and I would say that I was a part of the problem with that because again, I was expecting a more mature, in hindsight, it is very mature, but I was expecting a long person listening to it to be miles different. And I feel like that is a feeling that she really probably had to balance over the last couple years of finding her sound, finding what she wants to say, doing it in a meaningful way, and it's different for people to enjoy. So I don't know. I just feel like that song really wrapped up this album in a perfect way. So. I don't know how long this video was. It feels like I went on a tangent, but if you listen, thank you so much. And just know that if I ever change my mind on music where I'm not the biggest fan of it on its first listen, 
um, I will come back and eat crow, eat the words that I say because um, it always takes a while to sit on some music for a while. That is part of the reason why I've always liked making song by song reactions because um, it does give you obviously more content, don't get me wrong, but it, it makes it so much more digestible. When you do it in one video, it's really hard to have one stance on an entire album after listening to just 40 minutes of music and just saying, this is what I think of it and I'm never talking about it again. So I did want to come back and say that. So thank you if you listened. Um, let me know if you think of, if you agree with anything that I said about this. Um, but just know that this comes from a place of love and I genuinely love this album. So let me know what your thoughts are on it, but thank you so much and I'll see you in our next video.